In the fast space world we live in, finding moments of stillness and self-reflection can be a rare luxury. The Lay Show with the Moon is a supportive show, an empathic environment for sharing, listening, and connecting with others on a deep emotional level. It is like your sanctuary for mindfulness, personal growth, and thoughtful exploration. Join us in this welcoming sanctuary where vulnerability is celebrated and authenticity. The show is where real people share their real experience, thoughts, and feelings. Our mission is to foster empathy, inspire resilience, and create a sense of community in a world that sometimes feels disconnected. TIK Radio aims to provide a supportive and inclusive platform where people can openly express themselves, share their experiences, and build a sense of community through the power of storytelling. Well, actually, the, the plate is right behind my throat. Okay. The plates are right behind my throat when I'm out in, a, in this really cold weather. Uh-huh. Yeah, I feel it. <laughs> when I breathe in, it touches the plate. Oh, I see. Yeah, I kind of, I heard yeah. the same story for another person that had, you know, and says, when it's, when it's cold, I'm like, really? I'm like, what do you feel? I, he goes, no, I can, I can yeah. feel it. <laughs> yeah, I got about four inches of titanium in my neck. Okay. And it sits right behind my, my esophagus and my, my bronchial uh-huh. tube right from my throat and it's in that area right below my Adam's apple and then it was well, <laughs> where my Adam apple starts down to the first rib in my chest I'm 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 plated so I can't bend my head very much uh, or Chata Dushan says that's what she said <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So when you go to like when you go to the airports and you pass like the security, do you get like the little sound? <laughs> no. I haven't been to a freaking airport in years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fly. If I can't drive there, I ain't going. Okay. Okay. And I've driven across the United States. I I, I, I like know, driving. I, I like road airport. trips. I really like road trips. Yeah, I, I don't like to go to the airport because they're going to look at the day gone uh, skid marks in my underwear when they open up my baggage. And, you know, <laughs> you don't need to see that crap. <laughs> That's between me and my underwear. <laughs> yes. I <laughs> know. Uh, you don't need to see it. I got a hole in my sock. <laughs> That's personal, right? <laughs> you know. The patrols. <laughs> It's like, yeah. hi, hi, hi. So they already know it's a local, you know. <laughs> but it took me. It's like me. I went down the, <laughs> I went down across the border in 81. Uh-huh. And uh, I just showed him my military ID card. And he just wh- flagged me through, you know. And I came back, showed him my military ID card, and flagged me through because that was my passport uh-huh. while I was on active duty before they changed the law. Now they don't want you to do that stuff in different places. Because when I went to Panama, you know, I, went, I spent time down in Panama there uh-huh. a couple months, two times. And uh, you, you can go anywhere. You just show them your ID card and you go into Colombia. You can go into Dagon, uh, uh, what the hell, is I can't think of the country above them, Costa Rica. You know, they didn't care because it was a military ID card. That was my passport uh-huh. for a lot of mm-hmm. things. But I couldn't, I couldn't like, fly across the ocean to Europe on my military ID card. You did have to have credentials, you know. Oh, in order to but do that, right. you're in an area, it's like they already know you're there and they go ahead and let you come over and spend your American money, you know. But it's it's completely different now. I mean, they, they've changed a lot of that stuff out. Oh, I'm Almost sorry. Like have All handsome. I didn't see you that you called. So I remember that, um, hi Jeff, how are you? 
I'm good. Hey, um, nice to see you on this uh, great Friday night. Hey, Rocky, it's good to see you, man. Um, I was in Panama a lot, too, with the AC-130 gunship, only, you know, we weren't supposed to be there. Um, yeah. I've never been to Mexico, but I've been to Honduras, Nicaragua. I have, too. <laughs> <El Salvador. laughs> Uh, How, Howard Air Force Base in Panama is where we were a lot, yeah. and uh, and you know since we weren't you know we had the AC down there. I was stationed at Hurlbert up in the Panhandle of Florida, and we always yeah. called it going down south because everywhere yeah. we went, weren't supposed to be right. So, um, but uh, you know for the first three rotations that I went to Panama, you know we were restricted to base and. Uh, have you ever been to Howard Air Force Base down there? Yeah. Okay, so I spent, you know, I spent two as... I spent two tours down there with uh, Jungle School. Yeah, 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 Fort yeah, Sherman. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fort Sherman. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, that but, was back uh, in the seventies. <laughs> yeah, but um, you know, it got a little boring at times because we would do a 30 day rotation that had been going yeah. on for a decade, you know, back in the eighties. And, uh, um, there's a main thoroughfare that runs through Howard. And as long as it's code alpha status, you know, they let civilian traffic go through yeah. and, uh, you know, and, it, and you know, we were always threatened. Don't you dare leave the base. <laughs> You're not allowed to go anywhere. And, uh, you know, so we were confined to base, but, you know, some of my older, uh, deployment team members, um, I was probably the youngest that I was the only one that wasn't a sergeant. I was a senior. You're the only one that was scared. <laughs> yeah, <I> was, <laughs> All the others didn't care. Hey, you know what though? <laughs> the guys that trained me were Vietnam veterans. So they taught me a yeah. lot. They taught me yeah. a great deal. And, uh, I miss them. I miss those guys. Um, I had a anyway. lot of Vietnam veterans. I had a lot of Vietnam veterans when I first went in the eighty second back in the seventies. But and it was like but I, I felt I, like I, an I, outsider. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I went in the military. I I signed up in in in, in nineteen eighty six at seventeen years old. Yeah. And and I thought I was just joining the Air Force. I didn't know they had a thing called special operations, but that's where I ended up. Yep. And uh, anyway, um, I figured out after my third rotation down there that these guys were, you want to play cards? And that was code for <laughs> jumping in a taxi and yeah. and heading down to these bars in Panama. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, and, yeah. And I remember there was these two bars we'd go to. One was called the Ancon and the other was called the Ovalo. Have you ever heard of them? <laughs> No, that was the, that was after I'd been there. I mean, I went to uh, Cologne and I went over to Panama City. Right, right. Uh, so, the, have you ever been across the Bridge of Americas? Names. Huh? I remember the, one of the most beautiful sights I've ever seen was going across the Bridge of Americas at night. Yeah, yeah, it's spectacular, isn't it? I thought it was pretty cool. But, I mean, you know, <laughs> it was a bridge to me. I mean, it's a you know, great scenery. You know, and you see a lot of stuff. It's so amazing going that you guys have been into like so in. many different places, you know, and made all the people that you've met, you know, with all your stories. Um, oh, my God, it's so that's, amazing. That's, that's, the, that's the cool thing. I didn't get to go to a, a lot of great places. Most of the places I went to weren't much fun, like Honduras yeah. and Chicago were not very good at all. I flew into the Honduras Air Base there. We were doing a, a three-week exercise there. And uh, I went in as Advon, and uh, that was the first time I actually got to raid a Dagon Air Force diner. Oh, and did you not <laughs> notice the food's a little better? Oh, hell yeah. That's why I say we raided it. <laughs> we went in there and ate our hearts out, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what was great when I was in up at Hurlbert, which is the headquarters of uh, Special Ops, I was in First South for Special Operations Wing. They were throwing money in there while they were closing other bases down. They were feeding money into our base. Our dining hall was amazing. I mean, geez, oh Pete, 
I mean, I'd have to get out my there. maps and look at what what air base I went to, but it was on the sea. Oh gosh, it was on the west side, but kind of in the middle. Uh, it, it was a pretty active base. I mean, C one thirties. We came in on C one forty ones, and there yeah, was some yeah, yeah. AC one thirties. I always enjoyed a one forty one versus a one thirty. Yeah. I prefer the C five A though if I'm just flying. Right. What, what branch were you in? There. I was Rocky in the 82nd Rocky. in the Army. Oh, you were airborne? Yeah, I put in eighteen years in the airborne. That is freaking awesome. So you were up in North Carolina then, right? Yeah, I was up Fayetteville. Yeah, and that's Fort why Bragg, all, they that's call why it you're Fort near Liberty Pope now. Air Force Base where all the one thirties yeah. are. I drank with a few of those guys. I bet. I bet. Yeah, I was with the AC 130s and the HH 53J Pavlo helicopters. Yeah. So if you remember Tom Clancy's Clear and Present Danger, oh, that, yeah. remember that, yeah. that book? I actually I actually have a friend that, up in Maryland when I went up there for my one of my operations. I was up at Walter Reed and I stopped off at his house. And uh, he took me over to the harbor where they shot that opening scene. It's like, holy shit. Right, right. But a lot of that was about Black Eagle Ops and what we were doing in yeah. Central America. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, of course, I had to sign a bunch of paperwork when I got out. But boy, yeah. they tried to twist my arm to reenlist. You'll never be a <laughs> part of anything that is important this in the rest of your life. And they even tried I'll to tell say, you, well, you're, well, you're never out, just so you know. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I still got another four <laughs> years where you can recall me. And I'll tell you my what, base commander back, back said, in, nope, you're never out. Back, back when I went to Grenada, on the opening oh, so days of Grenada, Grenada, they went through and they literally, they literally whitewashed the Dagon airstrip down there with C-130s. And I never knew how powerful the damn 20 millimeter was. Until I got around the buildings up on the hill and I could see through the buildings. Are you, you're talking about the AC? The AC 130s. They went through there and they strafed the airport and a, a couple, uh, yeah, some fighter but, jets went in there and knocked over. Some right. Stuff. So, well, when I was in, you know, um, and they're, they're all retired and there's new ones now, but ours, yeah. uh, the troop door, you couldn't even get in. Actually, when we were going down south, that's what we called it when we would, because we were in the panhandle of Florida. We called it going down south. Yeah. And, uh, anyway, um, the troop door, you know, on the left side, um, it, you can't even get in. That's just full of television equipment, you know, lenses. Yeah. And then, you know, just aft of that is your 20, you know, your twin Gatlin guns. Yep. Which will tear up a football field in about five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> they, they took out a hundred head of cattle at the end of the runway with their C, with, with the AC one thirty. Right, they literally right. destroyed the uh, cattle uh, herd at the, that was grazing down at the end of the runway. Oh my like, goodness! Holy crap! But but you're talking about that forty mil tank piercing shell, and then aft of the wing. Is the 105 howitzer. Yep. So when we were getting ready to deploy to go down and do um, Operation Just Cause, you know, the Panama invasion to take out Noriega, I was out on the flight line one night uh, with a crew chief and uh, we were stenciling Felice Navi dot Noriega. Oh my on this God. Five barrel. <laughs> Because if you remember in 89, that's it was the time that he went down. But what a lot of people don't know is that when we finally had him um, confined to his compound, we got intel that he hated um, American uh, heavy metal music. Hated it. So we surrounded his compound with huge, like, you know, huge speakers. Uh -huh. And pounded him 24 7 with loud heavy metal music until we finally drove his ass out and it's, it was a little bit of a psychological operation i think rocky rocky are you here yeah he's muted let me see 
Um, I didn't mute him. Yeah, I was going to ask him if he ever got to Korea because uh, that was really the only I got to go to Korea. Um, Rocky, I don't hear. Oh, he's back. Uh huh. Good. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Is he there? Yeah, it's been here. Yeah, I can't see you. Can't Rocky, did you ever go to Korea for spirit? Yeah, I spent a year in Camp Casey. Oh, wow. Did you? Yeah. yeah, I went to Kunsan. Um, remember Operation <laughs> Team Spirit, the joint readiness um, operations we would do as a show of strength against the North? Yeah, Team Spirit? Yeah, Operation yeah, Team Spirit. I, 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 was there, I was there for the 88 Team Spirit. I was I also there was out in the field when they You had... and I were there together. Oh my brother. God! Yeah. Now yeah. reunited. <laughs> that, is, I also... that is crazy. The whole I... place smells like kimchi. And tell me, did oh, you yeah. ever drink yeah. any soju? <laughs> Wake up in the morning and go run four miles with the smell of kimchi everywhere. <laughs> everywhere you go, it smells like kimchi. <laughs> so it's you reuniting also, after how many had, uh... years? Nineteen eighty-eight. Oh my God! <laughs> we were both no, there for nine, Team 1988. Spirit in '88. That is freaking great. Yeah. We need to celebrate. I also it's, time it wasn't a soul. lot of fun. It's a 30-day operation, and you're, I usually spent most of it in a cum suit. Wow! But I also spent the entire time with the Olympics. We we had to to hang out around the outskirts of of the uh, Seoul area where they're having the Olympics. Yeah. So 35 years after that, you guys are reunited and talking about it. <laughs> so we were both there in 88. That is crazy. And we were both in Panama. <laughs> yep. Both in Panama, both in Nicaragua, are in, uh, in Honduras. Honduras. Yep. And that, and if you got anywhere near the uh, Mosquito Coast, you know why it's called that. <laughs> I didn't get near the Mosquito Coast. We, 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 we went and went out to the jungle there in Honduras, and we were running around out there, aggressing uh, some of the uh, uh, Honduran uh, military. Yeah, did and no. we, we went around pulling uh, the aid station. We pull into a goddamn uh, uh, little Jeff village and, and Rocky just turned a, a sixty-eight rail. yesterday. It was his birthday, so. Yeah, he's just ahead of me. I'll, uh-huh. a, a happy birthday, Rocky. Happy birthday. And you are 68 well, years young, my friend. 68 yep. years young. Um, I'll be 56 next month. So well, You're young. I can't even remember what I was doing when I was 56. <laughs> well, I'm trying to uh, be, a, be a good man. That's what I'm trying Tell to do. him what, what you're going to do, Jeff. Tell him what you're going to do for 90 days. <laughs> Um, yes. I'm hooking up with some veterans. I'm hooking up with some veterans, and we are going to an undisclosed location, and we're going to rehone our skills. Yep. Because we have a feeling that uh, might not be a good idea to be our uh, second line of defense. You know, you're never well, out. We, we we already have our range cards. We've had them for a long time here. Some of yeah. the guys that live around me, you would be surprised what they own. Yeah. You know, and legally owned. Oh, wow. Right. Right. Yeah. And we're even going to Some of that stuff was handed down from her father's from World War II. <laughs> oh, we, wow. um, Tick, just so you know, we've yeah. postponed it uh, two weeks, uh, two weeks uh, from then the date. We oh, were okay. So it's more, uh, you have more days to be here. Okay. Well, uh, myself and two other people uh, have VA appointments that are kind of important. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. So anyway, so hey, Rocky, hey, uh, um, airborne man, um, did you do halos? No, I didn't do halos. I was basically static jump. I jumped out of the uh, let's see, go back to the caribou, the C one thirty, the C one forty one, UH one H, and then the Black Hawk. Right. I've jumped out of all of those. Amazing! Wow! Amazing! I, I I never done I never done free fall. I wasn't in the right yeah. in the west to do the free fall. The, the highest I, I ended up going to Benning and jump school, and and most of ours were you know fifteen fifteen thousand feet. But I ended up having to go and do halos at uh, thirty five to thirty six thousand feet. 
wearing yeah. thermals and an oxygen mask. And unfortunately, a hundred pound pack too. And uh, I just had the MRI done on my back, and I'm I'm okay as long as I take naproxen. <laughs> but they, they found that I have deep compressions in my spine. <laughs> I have a bad back too, man. Disc. I'm humping rucksacks and shit. But you, you man, know how it I, is. I, 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 I'll tell you some of the stuff I had to jump. I had to jump WIC containers. Yeah. You know. It's, a, hey, it's basically power. a 105 box with all your equipment stuffed into it, radios and batteries and combo wire and crap. Weighs about 150 freaking pounds, and you got the door position. All you do is lean out and let the prop, the prop suck you out. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, the M60, I, 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 jumped, I, I jumped the M60 machine gun. I jumped the Dragon, and I jumped. Regular tactical crap when I wasn't on a, you know, specific weapon. Wow. You know, when you're young, you think you're invincible, but I hit the ground pretty hard a couple (laughs) times, and I'm like, man, I'm gonna feel that when I get older one day. Well, we're 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 getting there now. (laughs) I got, I hit the ground one time here in North Carolina. We do an AWOD jump. I hit the ground. I was out for six hours, and nobody could find me. Holy and I crap. finally gained consciousness. I gathered all my stuff up and walked into the rally point. And everybody's yelling at me about the, where are you where been? Where you been? been? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I jumped in. I jumped into. Uh, uh, gosh, I can't remember the name of the operation. It was in California. It was the largest mass attack since D Day. We had four drop oh, no zones, kidding. and nobody. Huh? I'm not familiar. Yeah, that was one we done at Fort Irwin. We was. Uh, the the California National Guard thought they could beat our our uh, uh, AAA defense, yeah, for any sure. armor and shit, you know. Yeah, and you that was ass. when they Come just, on. yeah, that that was just back when they were starting with the Miles equipment, and they had this stuff all over their stuff, and we jumped in, and we we never knew about the Santa Ana winds, you know, oh, what they would do to yeah. a jump, and I don't think anybody hit the drop zones. I did. I I jumped on gold and landed on silver right at the edge of silver oh. into the rocks. <laughs> Broke my ankle. Whoa. We had yeah. ninety seven. We had ninety seven injuries and four fatalities on the jump. Ouch! And yeah, I mean, so that was <laughs> acceptable. And, when, and you know, yeah. and my my instructor, you know, he used to those halos. I mean, because you gotta. I mean, you're get you're just all over the place when you go out, you know, at that yeah. at that altitude, and you're you gotta you gotta gain your uh, your flatness, you know, and uh, yeah. I can't remember what you call that. Um, we, but then but he you, would, you had to gain that flatness with that rucksack between silly. your legs. <laughs> he would fly into you and knock you silly to see if you could regain it. Before yeah. you hit how many tryouts you needed to do that? Like so many tryouts to oh, you know. Geez. <laughs> All I know is I remember when I got selected for the deployment team, and and they're like, "You got to go to jump school up at Benning." That tower actually scared the crap out of me. Yeah. But then I'm sure that after I, jumping, I only got afraid of. I, uh-huh. I only got afraid of heights over five thousand feet. Yeah, you know that's the highest I've been in the helicopter is five thousand. But then feet Rocky and the Jeff, door. after jumping <laughs> so many times, of course you're you're resilient. Like you're not afraid of you know other things. You know, after that, I think it's you, your body change. I don't know. I would you know jumping. Hey, no, well, psycho- I'll, I'll be honest. I was it, pretty psychological. A lot of times, I, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I went through. I mean, I went through survival school, POW camp, jump school. You name it. I was in special ops. We were air commandos. So, you know, and that was the deal. We had to protect the 130 where it went. And mostly, what we did in the 80s was go down south, and it was actually recon. We didn't even send the AC up with any ammo. We just sent it up with a lot of chaff and flare. And if you don't know what chaff and flare is, I'm sure Rocky does. Chaff mm-hmm. is shredded aluminum that jams radar. And uh, flare is just so if you get, uh, they get locked on by a, a air to ground. Uh, yeah, Sam. Or Sam. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. The flare shoots out and then the. Uh, oh, it is in psychology. They train okay. you to do everything. And what you bring with you 
helps you out. Yes. And you, you, you can always tell the kids who never went outside from the kids who played outside till dark <laughs> because yeah. they knew what it was about. You know, they, they knew how to use the self-discipline to get to different things when the lights were, you know, when it was dark. I knew guys who were scared of the dark when I was in the army and it's like, holy crap. Right. Right. But you know, in, 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 in air force spec ops, we did everything at night. We did. Did you ever waterboard we, yourselves? Everything we did oh. was at night. We did not do did, anything during the daylight. Only at night. Everything. Oh my God. Did you, Always did, under did you the ever cover get of darkness. Drunk, did you ever get drunk with your fellow crewmen and waterboard each other for fun? Um, well, we used <laughs> to, uh, we, we used to go to a mud pit and just see who was the left, last man standing. And believe it or not, it was usually me. <laughs> no, we, we used to sit around head. the barracks. I can take some hits. <laughs> we used to sit around the barracks and whoever got drunk. Oh my God. You know, and breathe, breathe slowly. Even while they're, they're waterboarding you and water getting in your mouth, you just swallow and breathe. Swallow I don't and know breathe. why they didn't waterboard. I don't know why they didn't waterboard me in POW camp. I think maybe they just forgot. <laughs> well, they probably, they probably had a restriction on it. Uh, we oh. used to do this just, we would freelance this in the barracks. I mean, we did all kinds of weird stuff. We, we were doing yeah, drugs. We did I mean, too, especially... That's why they called us the jumping junkies back in the seventies. Well, we, we yeah. got away with, we, our uniforms were known as sterilized battle dress uniforms, yeah. sterilized BDUs. They have nothing on them. Uh, we were allowed <laughs> to wear, wear, wear our hair a little bit out of regs. Um, our, our uniforms had nothing on them, not a damn thing. A Velcro patch that we peel off before you deploy. Yep. We were totally nondescript everywhere we went. Wow. Yeah, a lot, a yep. lot of things that people did back in in the in the seventies. You know, like I said, I I had a lot of guys in my platoon that were uh, multiple tours in Vietnam, and they would they would just teach all the new guys some of the stuff that they went through. And one time we went out to the field and we were aggressing the the uh, uh, intel com uh, intel battalion, mm -hmm. and. It, Toward the end of it, they said, okay, the field problem's over, blah, blah, blah. And they literally came up and captured some of us and took us out to their little camp made out of Constantino wire. Yeah. I spent three days, oh, I spent wow. three days solid in a damn wall locker buried in the ground. Yeah. And it was, and they were trying to break me because I wouldn't Rocky. tell them anything. I wouldn't even, wow. I wouldn't even yeah. give them my name, rank, and serial number. Yep. And yep, that, they broke, that's a, they broke that's one a, of my fingers like trying to get me to talk. Camp, basically. Yeah. Wow. It, it was, it was, it was said that they, they literally destroyed a goddamn chaplain. I mean, they, they knew how to hit this guy. They hit him hard and they, they just talked all kinds of trash to him and literally, it, it literally destroyed the guy. And I was in that damn camp for, four and a half days they tried to break me had nothing to eat they told me a little bit of water now and then to keep me from dying yep <laughs> get me yeah, in a wall it's, locker it's most stuff, of the 24-hour time period i eat I, I i literally ate bugs in the damn wall locker oh if i found it crawling on me i ate it you have to go alone in a place in your mind to pass the yeah. time yeah. It's all psychological. Uh, no shit, right? And I never, yeah. I, you know what was funny is, like, my mom is really a license <laughs> to carry in all 50 states, and last summer, at seven, she was 17 when she had me. And uh, I watched her pick off a woodchuck with a 22 at 55 yards. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. She's the one that taught me how to shoot, and... You know, making marksmen wasn't a problem. <laughs> well, my, my, I had parents who were a little more pacifist, and I literally had to find people to learn a lot of things that I've learned. Like hunting, I learned that from one of my dad's friends mm -hmm. who I who's still alive today, and, and I still talk to him regularly. And uh, 
you know, he, he told me one time, he said, man, he said, you went a hell of a lot further than anybody ever thought you would do, you know, cause oh, I was, wow. my, my grandfather picked me up when I, after I was born and he's, he seen me for the first time when my mom and dad moved back to Indiana and he picked me up and told my mom, he said, this is my rebel. Did you say in Indiana? And from that point on, I was I was hard ass. <laughs> yeah, he said Indiana. Did you were born in Indiana, Rocky, or? No, I was born in Georgia. I was born at oh. Augusta, Georgia. But you Fort, spent time Fort in Gordon, Indiana because that's where I'm from. That's where I was born and raised. Is Indiana? Terrible I'm hope. In Indiana right now. I, I'm from Terrible Hope. My dad, my dad, who's been pretty oh. much my life forever. <laughs> Te yeah, terrible. Oh, watch hope. out. We might be cousins. We might oh, be cousins. Oh, no. Yeah. There we I, go. It wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> Terre Haute, Indiana. Yeah, we, we nicknamed it Terrible Hope. And there is a yep. certain stench in that town. What What is the, What is that smell in Commercial that? solvents. Commercial solvents. Is that what it is? The chemical plant down in the south end of town. Well, my father... Um, before my mother wisely divorced him when I was five, uh, um, was a full ride, set all the records in the state of Indiana at the time uh, as a running back and got a full ride to Indiana State University there in ter yeah. Terrible Hope. But, of course, he um, uh, his sophomore year, he uh, was partying quite a bit. <laughs> doing drugs, drinking, and didn't 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 make the team his second year, and he he lost his scholarship. So then uh, he was going home on the weekends, and he got my mom pregnant with me. So here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Where did your dad work at? Where did he work at? Yeah, Hell, There's so I many know. industries there in Terre Haute that. I might know some of the people who worked in some of those places. Now, actually, I was born, if you go straight north on US 41, you know, yeah. it runs on the west side of uh It was Indiana, all the way to Chicago. <laughs> all the way to Chicago. Well, I grew up up in, well, not grew up, but I was born in Newton County and uh, okay. went to kindergarten in Kentland, Indiana. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to put me in second grade because I could read and write in kindergarten, but my dad wouldn't let him because he wanted me to be an athlete like him and I would be too small, which to be honest with you is interesting because I started high school at five foot tall and graduated at five ten, and I'm just a little shade over six two now. I grew four inches in the military. Yeah. My T.I. Oh, wow. in the Air Force, my T.I. Rocky in the Air Force, oh, man, he was all over my shit. I was a, I was a squad leader. I made honor graduate, and I was always getting pulled out of classes, and I didn't know what they were about And because I had my stepdad in my head. He was an asshole. He's dead now. I made peace with that. But anyway, um, he, to he told me I wouldn't make it through basic training. Screw him. I, 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 yeah, I did more than make it through. Don't like you made but my TI man. became Chief Master Sergeant. Hi, Cody. In the United States. Air Force. Hold on. Hold on. Tick, tick. Sorry. My t what I was saying was my, my training instructor at Lackland down in, uh, you know, San Antonio. Yep. He made Chief Master Sergeant of the entire United States Air Force. And I found out because I, I had a day, my went my days off of work from where I was working was Wednesday. And I was flipping channels in 1997 and I caught C-SPAN and they were having the congressional hearings on tailhook. You remember tailhook, which was about yep. sexual mis misconduct in the military? Yep. So they had the top four enlisted up there talking about what they were going to do to resolve this issue. And holy crap, they turned the camera on the guy in the blue suit in the Air Force, the top. It he? It's, it's Creasy. Oh. Tech, yep. He was a tech sergeant when he was my TI. And, and now he is the top enlisted um, individual in the United States Air Force in 1980. I had a, a, a DI 
at Fort Polk where I took basic and AIT at the old Tigerland. And our one our, our wasn't our senior drill sergeant, it was the next step down, I guess you would call him the assistant uh drill sergeant. That guy was on the Ed Sullivan show five times with the Army drill and, and uh, rifle team in between his tours in Vietnam. He was a tough guy, but when I went there, my, my uncle told me, he said, when you go there, don't let him mess with your head. <laughs> I said, okay. <laughs> yeah, he did. He said, don't let him mess with your head. My, my uncle spent 20 years in the Army. He said, mm-hmm. don't mess with, don't let him mess with your head. Whatever they say, you know, just kind of go with it. But if you try to insult you, come up with a good reason yeah, don't let to mess make with them laugh. And, 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 and it's like, all you know, POW camp, basic training, everything that's hard is temporary. It's temporary. Yeah, but it, back in 75, they could still knock the shit out of you. Oh, they were knocking the shit okay. out of us in 86. Wait, no, I'm talking about physically knock the shit out of you. That, I'm that, not kidding. The first two <laughs> weeks we were there, my my assistant drill sergeant wasn't there because he was in the stockade for beating one of the trainees up in a prior company. Okay? That's how bad it was. Tigerland was a place where they sent people to oh, go to Vietnam. Tigerland. And before oh they God. closed I saw that. I saw that it. that movie. Yeah. Before they closed it, okay, they were still putting guys in in 75 and early parts of 76 before that. I think they closed off North Fort. They went... And they went to, they went to they went to Southeast Asia and were doing some dirty deeds done dirt cheap. Well, yeah, but the whole point of it was is they sent guys there to be hardened to go to Vietnam. Tigerland was the worst place you could go for a comfortable basic Look, training at any time. The only thing I really ever get emotional about is um Vietnam veterans. Um because uh when I went in um, they were on the tail, you know, the ones that made a career out of the military uh, mm-hmm. that had served in Vietnam. And, you know, they're, they're the ones that made sure I made it home in one piece. You know what yeah. I mean? They were hard on me. I had a, I had a lot hard. of those guys. I, I had a lot of those guys. But when I first got to basic and AIT and, and met Drill Sergeant Curry, this guy was six feet, six inches tall. Ah. Black as the as midnight. That was he greasy. Was him, uh, him and his wife were the Louisiana state champions of Taekwondo and karate. Oh boy! And oh, yeah, wow. he 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 could snap. He could slap you before you could even start to do a a day uh reaction to it. But he when he done his first uh, inspection in the morning. Is that nine o'clock? Come through and inspect us. He's going through there, and he would just knuckle slap these guys. You mean she made you pay like that? And from that point on, that guy did not mess with me the entire time. He did not single me out. And when I got ready to graduate, he said, "You're not going to like the 82nd. It's all spit, shine, and polish. You need to go to special forces." Rocky, but, you sh- and I was in the first time. Man. They had a downsize, and you couldn't get in. And and you showed him something, and that's what Creasy wanted to see out of me. Yeah, Creasy, Creasy was an eight year Marine before he um, went into the Air Force. And uh, yeah, Curry, two- Curry pulled out four goddamn tours with long range reconnaissance in in Dagon, Vietnam. Yeah, well, Sergeant Towers was yeah. in six different units, and most of those were long range reconnaissance. And I was there for infantry. Our fucking platoon was going to the 82nd, and we were up at 4 o'clock in the morning, running at 5, get back after doing the running and calisthenics and the day going obstacle course in time to get a quick breakfast, change clothes, and get in formation for training. <laughs> and he said, we've done that to you so that when you go to jump school, you're going to be prepared. Most of the guys that I was with, we would run out and catch the road guards just for the hell of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were running our asses off. We, we set so many records with that because they wanted to do that. They said, we're going to go set a record. 
we did the 27 mile march with full duffel bags of everything we owned at the time. And 27 and mile march, done, uh, just so anybody that might be listening understands, that's just over a marathon. Yeah, just over a marathon. And we walked that sucker from six o'clock in the morning till six o'clock in the evening. And we were the fastest unit to ever go through that road march in the history of Fort Polk. Awesome. Wow. Awesome. Because we were well, dead at the time, too. I, got, I mean, we I, were wore out. <laughs> i got to tell you about Creasy, though, okay? Because you're going to freaking appreciate and love this, all right? <laughs> okay, so for two weeks, we had a different training instructor. We, You know, you had a drill instructor in an Air Force are called TIs. Training, training, and I, yeah. that's why when I got out, you know, because being in special ops, it never freaking stopped. Now, yeah. I had to be worldwide immunized for freaking everything, and I swore when I got out, I'd never take another damn shot, not even a tetanus, and I never took that vaccine either. But anyway, um, so while we're getting these shots, you know, you're going through the line like cattle as they just. <laughs> and uh, our TI said, well, the Black Plague's coming and nothing's going to prepare you for that. And we were like, the Black Plague? It's the Black Plague. And they kept telling <laughs> us the Black Plague was coming. And, uh, man, I mean, we're, we're killing it in inspections. And, you know, um, I, I, I picked a really good squad and uh, and anyway, they assemble us, they let us know that, you know, our TI had been on leash with you. We started failing inspections. And on Christmas Eve, 1986, he calls me into the office and he said, I'll be back in three days. And if you fail inspection again, you're going back to day one of training. And at this point, I'm almost halfway through, you know. And you don't want to go back to day one. You recycle. Yeah, yeah. So I realized what I'd done wrong. Um, my problem child, I had, his last name was Jones. I had him at the end of my, you know, the row of bunks. And I flip-flopped my squad. I put that asshole right next to me. And Smitty, who was my right-hand man, I put him at the other end. I flip-flopped my squad. And we drilled for three days. Christmas Day, the day after Christmas, and the next day. And we passed when Creasy came back. And uh, thank goodness. Because <laughs> I really didn't want to go back to day one. I'll tell you something that's really cool. What's that? When I was in Korea... We Back when mm -hmm. I was in Korea, I was working over at the hospital helping clean off the damn uh, air pad there for the helicopter. And one of the helicopter pilots who was going out to do a check on his aircraft was one of my old DIs who took over for Drill no Sergeant kidding. Power was Drill Sergeant Pilkington. And I go, Drill Sergeant Pilkington, like that. He turns around and goes, Calls me by my name. He says, where the hell you been? <laughs> he was a pilot. He was a, C he was a CW3 running medevac there at Camp Casey. Wow. Is that cool or what? That is cool. Right there. Um, <laughs> remember I told you yeah, about that the was like 14 freaking years helicopter. later. Wow. Yeah, well, that, that's like 14, 15 years later, I meet him again. Remember I was telling you about the HH-53J Pavlo helicopter? That was on yeah. the cover of Tom Clancy's Clear and Present Danger. That was exclusive yeah. to Herbert Field. Well, there was a bubble on the front of that, and at the time it was state-of-the-art technology. It's known as FLIR, forward-looking infrared. Mm -hmm. And we were testing that out. Um, I was actually at Dobbins for two months. Uh, while well, we tested it out in the north, in the mountains of northern Georgia and southern Tennessee, uh, because that was the terrain that we were, it was very similar to the terrain down south. So, um, anyway, um, I'm stationed in Fort Walton Beach, Florida. And to be honest, 
I was doing really well with the ladies back then. <laughs> Everybody thought I looked like Tom Cruise, and I went ahead and told, and my last name's White, so I was telling those little white lies that I was a pilot. <laughs> Oh, now we know. No, oh, just I was giving the girls the fantasy, you know. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, it was wrong. But, you know, I have to cut, you, I have to cut you off for a second. I have to cut okay. you off for a second. Okay. Your last name is White. My yes, great grandfather's name on my mom's side was White. <gasps> no. James White. Oh, my. Dude, there I we guarantee go. you we're probably freaking related. There we go. There we go. Now you're family. <laughs> well, this is where it gets fun, okay? Uh -huh. So I'm up at Dobbins, and really, I'm not doing squat up there. They're, you know, the it's it's they put us up, and I remember it was, uh, it was off of Windy Hill Road in Atlanta. That's where Dobbins Air Force Base is. And... Uh, um. I met this gal that worked at this. It's it was like a Hooters, only it was called Boomers, and she was really good looking. And I would bring her, and they put us up in a really nice hotel. Uh, it was called the Bradbury Suites or something. And I mean, there was actually birds in cages in this place. <laughs> so yeah, I'm bringing her back through, but the the flight crew. The flight crew is always debriefing after they go out at night. I told you everything's done at night. They, and and it must have been like, I don't know, one thirty two in the morning. I'm bringing her in to my room at the at the hotel. And and Ken Sipperly, Captain Sipperly, who I'd gotten to know, he goes, Airman White, well, do you mind uh, introducing your escort? <laughs> So I had to go over and, and, you know, these are officers, you know, when I'm enlisted. So I introduced them and, you know, very respectfully. And then I saw that one of the pilots last name was white. And he said, would you mind excusing your escort for a minute? I'd like to speak with you. <laughs> this is going to knock your socks off. Turns out his name's Jeff white. Same as me. Oh, no. Yeah. And chicks that I was meeting on spring break were looking the name up in the phone book and calling his house, and he's married. And his and I had told him I was a pilot, and my name was Jeff White, same as him. So he goes, this is what's going to happen when we get back to Fort Walton. You're coming over for dinner, and you're meeting my wife <laughs> because – you have caused me a lot of bullshit, Airman. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that, your lie got you in trouble. <laughs> because I was telling chicks on the beach I was a pilot. And, my, and they knew my name was Jeff White. Same as, what's, the, I mean, the coincidence is crazy, right? <laughs> so now, are you, are, do you think you're related, Rocky and, and Jeff? Well, I tell you, uh, if his mother or his uh, grandmother or any of his aunts were from Decatur, Illinois, then chances are we are. Well, my, my, they're, my they're, grandpa, they're from my, the Indi Indiana, Illinois border. Okay. Well, see. <laughs> uh, there we go. Yeah, I can't think of all their names. One, one of the one of the his daughters, which was my grandmother's sisters. I've got pictures of them downstairs. One of her, her uh, sisters was named Pearl. I and dude, she would. There is a Pearl in our family. Well, goddamn! Here we go. Oh my goodness! You, you, you know, you know the significance behind uh, James White is. Well, do you I'll know about you... Sir William White? But hold on. I'll give you a brief history of it. All right, you go James first. White, James White ran with the younger and uh, James gang, got caught in Minnesota, spent five years at the territorial prison, got out, went back over to Chicago, got on the same train line that he was robbing with the Cole Younger and James gang. There you go. 
retired as a damn conductor after about 40 years. Had a half, had a, uh, uh, he had a, 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 uh, uh, hotel or they didn't have a name for it. It's hotel. It was called something, a boarding house Mm -hmm. in Decatur, Illinois. He was on the Burlington Northern going from Chicago to Seattle. And in Seattle, where he would stay over several times a month, him and a bunch of other guys formed the Paternal Order of the Eagles. Ah, no kidding. My dad got into it because my mom was related to him, and he was the founding uh, the founding member of the Eagles, and they let my dad join the Eagles, which got all of us kids in the Eagles. But then uh, he had, uh, I'm trying to think, six kids, I think it was, six or seven kids. Oh, yeah, I knew some of them who worked in Terre Haute at the foundry, the Garland Foundry down there south of town there just before you cross. Dude, that I was River born track. in northwest Indiana on the Illinois Indiana line. Yeah. You see, I show you how close it is now. You know where Hubs, Illinois is, right across the border yes, up in that area? In, in moments. That's where my grandfather was from, and he moments. married my grandmother from Decatur, moved oh, to okay, Terre Haute. Oh, yeah, Decatur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I, I lost, think you're I lost related. my grandpa Gordon during COVID, and no, he didn't die of COVID. He was 95. He fought and he lived through the Great Depression. He was the oldest of five children. He joined the Air Army in World War II at 17 also. Fought in Europe in the infantry in the Army. Wow. Yep. Strongest my man I've ever known. Lost my, my grandma. grandfather didn't go to, to uh, uh, World War II because he was a master caster at the foundry making tank turrets. So he was he was more students. important to stay at home and do yeah. that. Yeah. So can you do, can you do Jeff and and Rocky can you do the ancestry and, and start connecting well, the dots that, that, maybe That's what I was going to tell you right now is the gift my yeah. grandfather gave me before he passed just over 2 years ago at 95 years old. Uh both my both my grandfathers, my mom's father and my father's father died at 95 and both of them were in world war ii yeah. one was in the navy on a sub and that's my mom's dad and the other was um infantry in the army and that's my grandpa gordon and i was really really close with him um gosh i still wish i could had him to talk to strongest man i've ever known in my life um, yeah, he, uh, at my age, he had to bury my grandma who died of a brain tumor, you know, and she didn't drink or smoke or nothing. Yeah. He got oh, hit by a thing. tornado and rode a refrigerator across the yard and was on WGN TV out of Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Head wrapped yeah. up. Anyway, yeah. he did our genealogy and it took him 15 years of diligent study. Okay. And mm-hmm. and I'm like, okay, white. That's uh, that could be anywhere in Europe, right? You know, Great Britain, you know, Ireland, Scotland. I go. So, w- what did you find out, Grandpa? He goes, well, we're Welsh. We're from Wales. Yep. I go, oh, no kidding. He goes, that's actually, my, we're direct blood. That's why two of my cousins have red hair. Yeah, we are. He goes, we're direct bloodline descendants of Will- Sir William White, who is instrumental in rounding up the pilgrims to escape religious persecution and board the Mayflower. And the yeah. first child actually born just off the coast of Plymouth Rock was a white. So it was so- considered, it was con- she was considered the first child born in the New World. I have now, heard the same a, story from my child, grandmother. You that heard child, that story too, Rocky? I heard that same story from my grandmother. There we go. No, yeah. so I want to know if you guys are related. <laughs> yes. And, I'll tell, and, and, I, 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 I'll tell you another told me interesting I'm the fact. seventh uh, firstborn child, all sons. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'll yes. tell you another interesting that, fact. I'm, I'm, he actually okay. registered. He and I are on the Mayflower Registry. What is the other story, Rocky? Okay, on my namesake side, 
my uh-huh. dad's side, his or my this ancestors first going. came here in 1769 and left his job as a professor at Cambridge University, sold all of his properties, bought four. Did you say Cambridge University? Boats. Did you just say Cambridge in University? England. In England. Yeah, that's where my twin daughters there are getting for their masters years. right now. Madeline and Marlene White are getting their masters at Cambridge University right now. Yeah. So, uh, I'm talking about on my dad's side now. My ancestor came over and founded a place in uh, Rhode Island, what's now Rhode Island. And he's mm-hmm. he's listed in the who's who of America. Because he started the first large mercantile because that's what his his professorship was about was was moving merchandise in economics two of his sons one of them was with the swamp fox as we know it on the movies the patriot yes. he was the lieutenant for that guy mel gibson one, played him yeah the other one was working up in Massachusetts somewhere with with uh, another guy who was attached to George Washington. And then later on, they started filtering around. I found out about three years ago that a woman I've known since 81, I knew her through her, her husband and my wife. She was my freaking cousin all this time. And her her nephew was my roommate in the military. I'm related to everybody who bears my name because only one family of Sealies came here. Wow. <laughs> so, what, so, Tick, what, do you, think, what do you think the odds are that Rocky and I are somewhere somewhere related? Everybody's related somehow. So uh, you I have know, to do I the know. answers. Yeah, not, okay. You could do the answers. Uh, there's a lot of dogs know. in the yard, man. There's a lot of dogs in the yard. There's just you don't a know who's in the thick of it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, out here, I'm related to 95% of the people who have my name because in the 1800s, they started the Mormon movement. They came out of northern Pennsylvania and they moved west. And my grandfather's dad decided he was going to stay in Louisville and my grandfather moved up into Indiana. The rest of them all moved west to Utah and all around. And in, in Smithfield, Smithfield, Utah, Utah. there's a thousand of them buried there. Wow. From different generations. They're all there because my, my dad's cousin done the genealogy for it. It took him like 25 years. Trace it back to the 14th century. (laughs) Wow. Dude, I, I guarantee you, you and I are probably, probably related. Either. Okay, so I'm the godmother of the reunion. Okay, so the, this party that you guys reunited, I'm the godmother. <laughs> I was, I, yeah, I yeah, don't know. Really it's, really hey, it's like, you it's were, like I said, you were one such guy a who was my roommate you were so in the military. Awesome. I had one guy who was my roommate in the military for four years. Uh-huh. And I didn't know. And we stuck together like glue. People call you Starsky and Hutch. Uh-huh. Okay. That's how, how close we were. And when I left the first time and then I came back in, it was like another shit, 10 years before I met up with him again. He was still there. He was still yeah. in, the, in the, the division. You and know, Hutch just, you know Hutch, Hutch just passed away the other day at 80 yeah. years old. Yeah. <laughs> But there's a, there's so many similarities you have. Like I go into a in the yeah. pack to do my will the first time. The girl looks at me, says, "We've got the name, the same name." I looked at her name tag, and yeah, we are. I said, "I bet your family went from from Salt Lake City area to California." She goes, "Yeah, they did." I said, "Yeah, we're we're, we're related. You're you're somewhere around my probably fiftieth cousin." <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that something? I had well, Rocky, I had, you I had know. A, I had a bank account, or I had a bankruptcy a while back, just to get away from everything. I, I took a bankruptcy, and my fucking lawyer had my same name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Rocky, the first time that I, I think I met you and I met Marcos, remember that time? Yeah. That, uh, it was on Marcos' show? 
Yeah. Yep, yep. That was the first time I met. And then Marcos and I, we, you know, we've been doing shows after that. <laughs> Marcos, you're here. I know you've been listening to this. I it's have so been, yes. <laughs> Well, R- Rocky, I've Small known world. you for, a, I've known you for uh, Hi, Sue. probably two How or three you, years Sue? now because I keep changing mm-hmm. my handles and I keep buying burner phones. Yeah. Just because I don't trust three letter agencies at all yeah but um, hell they got your burner phone now man You're well you have to invite now. me <laughs> if you reunite cousins if your cousins are long cousins or you cool. know <laughs> rocky, you have I to met, invite me I jeff met, and, and rocky i met you on kelton christian i was jw47 yeah. <laughs> back then hey okay. guys i was oh, on the show rocky. several times yeah. Name yeah. Rocky. yeah yeah You're very yeah. famous well, I get on here mm-hmm. and, I, and I, I talk about things, man. I know a lot of stuff. I've been doing research since the seventies. And it was his stuff. birthday yesterday, Marco, so we can play the happy birthday song. Rocky is very <laughs> smart and very wise. No yeah, doubt he's about very it. smart. That's why, that's why Duncan wise, had him yes. on all the time. I, how come you haven't been on Kilted? I. He he gets on about the time I lose my signals around here. I'm out here in Montana. Uh, okay. Man. I just always enjoyed you going on there with with Duncan. That was always good because you're smart and you're wise. And I also think I was always learning sometimes too. <laughs> I was always learning something when I was listening to you. You know, something. I'm that, on a whole bunch of other shows now, but you know, there's some shows that I don't get on anymore because they just kind of stop being interested. Not that they're interesting. It just it started to get stop getting interested about what I was talking about most of the time, trying to point things out to people. And, and they didn't want to I hear had it. A lot of hate mail. Huh? And they, yeah, yeah, me too, me too. And 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 what it is is these people have what's known as normalcy bias, and that's where their bias the towards normalcy. You no, know, the writing's on the freaking wall. Uh, don't you mean cognitive dissonance? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I spent 18 years in oh, the medical Rocky, field. Sue is saying hi. She hasn't seen you for a long time. I don't think Rocky is able to see the chat, guys. <laughs> so I'm saying, I'm, I'm reading what the chat says, Rocky. <laughs> Sue, they say happy uh, birthday to Rocky. Saying hi. Well, thanks. One birthday. Everyone after is an anniversary. It's a birthday. It. <laughs> Just Happy birthday, Rocky. <laughs> Thanks. And Sue is in three days. Rocky. No. I'm going to have to in go silent. I'm going to have to days. go silent for a few minutes. I got to feed my dogs. Well, and, and Rocky, okay. let me say one last thing. Happy birthday and many more. I hope so. <laughs> <for> you, <sir. laughs> Yes, Rocky. We have to. You have to reunite with your cousin Jeff. <laughs> we can... to be related. Oh yes, I felt, and you know the synchronicity and how you know the similar places that you guys were. You know all the experience, and then it doesn't matter the years of difference. You know, but like you were, he was there first, or you were there first. But I think it's you know it's a lot of a. Um, yeah, he's he's twelve. He's twelve years older than I am. Uh huh. I'm back. But I don't. I feel. I feel his energy young too, because I, you know, I met him through Rocky's, Marcos. It Rocky's was amazing how, um, how the rapport, you know, with his mind is. And we were talking about different subjects that the the time that I met him, you know, and it was one yeah, subject, he, and, he's, another he's subject and another down. subject and another subject. You don't, know, <laughs> he don't pull any punches, man. Yes, he'll, he'll tell <laughs> so, you straight up how it is. And he don't sugarcoat shit. No, Sue. Um, you can't. Su- Rocky's you turning can't sixty. He it. turned sixty-eight yesterday. I'm sorry, you, Rocky. That she's asking on the chat. I, su- I said, you can't sugarcoat anything anymore. You know, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I pointed out to you, TK, that or <laughs> TK, TIK, that uh, you know, there's things that people have to learn how to do. You know, and I've. I've been instructed on how to do those things years ago and I do them every now and then whenever I just need to, or think I need to practice, you know, and people just blow it off. Like, Oh, I got to worry about that. Uh, it doesn't look that way. I mean, you know, 
anything can be an emergency where you have to do something. I mean, out here where I'm at, if you get off the road with a half a tank of gas, you're going to get stranded because that road might go for 100 miles. And if you don't have a little bit of food in there, you might be hungry for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. I don't go anywhere without an extra five-gallon gas tank, a five-gallon uh, gas can in the back of my, my rig. Yeah, but how many times do you go off off road with uh, out any food or water? A lot of people do. Well, I call that fasting. <laughs> Most people call that a nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, um, I, I Sue is really, saying hi in the really chat to you. Oh, as long Jeff? as I got a little caffeine and a little bit of nicotine, I'm good to go. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at too, man. But you know. Some people aren't even prepared to change a tire. You know, they don't even know how to do that. Or read a yeah. map. They, they say, well, I'll just call the, the Dagon Road Company and they'll mm-hmm. come out and change it for me. No. Yeah, but if they can find you. Yeah. You know, my dad, my dad was a watch repair and he always taught me, you know, you need to learn how to survive. You need to do. You know, the due diligence on things and not replace things. You have to repair them. Make sure you find a way to repair them first. And the only way you're going to take value of the things, because he always manages time, you know, because he was a watch repair. So the time was very important for him. So by replacing, I learned how to take care of things, you know, and how to be prepared for things and not just have someone fix the things for me. So, yeah, I see what your name is. What? You put your name as Tick that, Radio. That, uh, that's why. It's kind of. That's why. It's kind of like the old this, story uh, I used to tell. It's kind of like the old story I used to tell people. You know, a woman sitting there in the front yard. It's raining like crazy, and the, and the water's reaching her porch. She goes inside. Somebody comes by in a boat. Say, "Come on out. We'll, we'll get you out of here." So, no, God will take care of me. About three hours later, this flooding, and she's up on top of the roof, and uh, they come by again and say, hey, man, get on the boat. It's going to get worse. No, God, they take care of me. And pretty soon, she's up to her neck of water, and she drowns. Mm-hmm. And she makes it to the pearly gates, and she says, God, I asked for help, and you didn't help me. He said, I sent you two boats. <laughs> You have to help yourself. Booyah. God right. only helps those who right. help themselves. Right. And, Jeff, and, and, um, and, and that's Jeff, why I get upset me? with people right now that are waiting for the rapture. You know, yeah. like the rapture is going to come and happened. yank them into heaven. And I'm like, do you even understand the trials and tribulations that are coming first? We've already been in that. Yeah. You really we, look we've back. Got a lot we've already more to been go in through, that. I, I'm afraid. So. You know, that's why I'm doing this 90 day retreat. I rec- I recruited all these guys. They're all ex military and we want to go see what we still have left in the tank and we're going to get it damn done. Let, let, let me point something out to you. Rapture says it's going to be seven years of tribulation on whose time belt God's because he made the earth in seven days. We might have been going through this since the fall of the Roman empire. And it's just now getting to the end of the seven years that God has on his clock. You know, we don't know. All you can do is prepare and fight that, like hell. Fight like you're the right. third monkey on Noah's Ark and it's getting ready to rain. Well, I've got two course study uh, language books that I'm taking with me. One is to learn Latin and is the other is to learn Greek. Oh, nice. Jeff, well, um, Sue is saying two. hi in the chat. She, I don't oh, think Sue from the UK? Yes, yeah, Sue from I UK. <laughs> hey, Steve, I only know two you? languages. I only know two Sue's languages. Awesome. I know I only she know, is. <laughs> yeah. I only know two languages. Uh-huh. English and 12 gauge. Me habla espanol. You can scream at somebody all you want when they're coming at you, but when they hear that shotgun racket, all of a sudden they get fear of God in them. You didn't pick up any espanol <laughs> when you were down No espanol, no gracias. Uh, <laughs> what I got, you don't want me to say on on pod. No, baby. no, thank you, oh, thank I you, know, Rocky. 
That's the Espanol slang. I even know some of that Korean too that you don't really speak in public either. So, uh, oh, Rocky B. about in Korea. Um, <laughs> did you ever yeah. get a chance to sample some uh, soju? Oh, yeah. That will yeah. knock I, you on your I, proverbial. I broke my, Is that I the broke Korean? I Is broke my Korean? alcoholic. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a Korean rice liquor, and it I heard of that. I heard of that. Silly. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's really killer though if you stick it in a one gallon uh, pitcher, one bottle in a one gallon pitcher, and then you pour in about two liters of they on Gatorade. You sit there, you don't feel a thing, and then when you stand up, you hit the floor. Yes, you do. I mean, yeah, I'm it's not called a kidding. kettle. It's well, called that a was kettle. the thing about Operation Team Spirit. We got like two days off, and I lost both days to soju. <laughs> I lost oh a whole week to that. So, I spent 90 guys, days on I the only end. have um, six minutes and Uh-oh. before we finish. No, that's fine. I just want to let you know. And Marcos <laughs> wants to play something for you. So as soon as you finish talking, Marcos will play a song. And then, Sue, your birthday is coming up. It's one day and a half. And it's Sue's birthday. So, Marcos, Aww. if you want to play something for Sue, uh-huh. too. So, <laughs> I know. <laughs> just want to do it. I didn't want to interrupt. Go ahead, Rocky. I was going to say, I spent 90 days up on the DMZ in a in guard post Olette. And when I came the down and took my pass, I spent, I spent a whole week de- inebriated. <laughs> <laughs> on soju. <laughs> on soju. I'm done. Thank you, guys. Gracias, Rocky, <laughs> Jeff, everyone. Thank you. I'm going to let Marcos do Thank the... You. Magic Chip, that he you. does with the music. Awesome. Okay. Nice thank you. I love you guys. Beyond. I'll see you. I'll see you soon. Hey, Rocky, it was really good to connect with you tonight. Yes. Thanks, I'm the godmother of the reconnection. Don't mention it, cuz. <laughs> you are. Uh, I Don't. bet we're cousins. Keep <laughs> Don't mention it. For the next live, TIK Radio. Yeah.